Shalom family. Welcome to another teaching from Tail Ministries. The title of this teaching is Khazaria 2.0. A fake people, a fake Jerusalem, a fake temple, a fake end times. So if any of you have done any research, you would have heard about Khazaria. And this is the place that um this is the place where your enemies come from. Many of the fake Jews who stole your heritage and identity come from. Now, before we really get into this teaching, I want to say this. Make a backup. Make a backup. Share it with, with whoever you want to share it with. Because this is one of those teachings where I think... It's just going to be like, bam, revelation. You know, it's one of those teachings that's going to be like, get the attention of your enemies. Um, I won't be surprised, and, and I hope I don't speak anything on this, but hopefully tail won't be shut down after this teaching. Because, you know, we're going straight to the enemy. So... I would say as a safeguard, if you like our teachings, if you haven't watched our teachings, download them, download those teachings, back them up, put them on hard drive, share them with your family, because I don't know if we're going to be up after this teaching. I'm serious, but, you know, pray for us. So this teaching is called Kazaria 2.0, a fake people. So, if anyone has been following Tail Ministries, you will find out that we believe and teach that the Negro is the true Hebrew Israelite of the Bible. And we have gone through and shown, shown you from the scriptures that that's the case. And we have shown you from historical documentation from Europe, Europeans. From Europeans that that is the case. So, the devil, he comes to kill, steal, and to destroy right we know that the devil you know has a fake messiah that's coming and so he also has a fake people the bible tells us in revelation 2 9 and 3 9 i know the blasphemy of them which say they are jews and are not but do lie they are of what the synagogue of satan okay now some of the people grew up in this lie you know they're considered gentiles but they think they're israel and they can't accept this fact. It, it, it's just hard for them, right? They, they've been locked in this paradigm because their people told them that they are the true Hebrews of the Bible and that they're God's chosen, but they're not. Uh, and yet they can't even look into it because it's so hard. So in his end time deception, I mean, it's been going on for centuries, but um, you have a fake people. Not only do you have a fake people, you have a fake Jerusalem. I do not believe that the current Jerusalem is modern day Jerusalem. It does not, I mean, I'm sorry, it's not the biblical Jerusalem. I do not believe the current modern day Jerusalem is the biblical location of ancient Jerusalem. Okay? And, it, and then uh, if you listen to some of our other shows, you will understand where I believe Jerusalem is, and it's not South Africa. Okay? Now, because we have a fake people, we have a fake Jerusalem, we're going to need a fake temple. Now, this is the plan to build a fake third temple. And you will see that in the writings. I don't believe it's going to occur. Okay, I don't believe that's going to occur. I believe the third temple will happen once we're back in the land, and I have proof text for that. But uh, we could go, go into that in the future. So, but their goal is to create a fake third temple. And their goal is to create a fake end times. And so that's why they've been, you know, pushing and drilling into your head that Ezekiel 38 is happening. Ezekiel 38 is happening and it's not. Okay, but that's why they keep drilling that into you and they kept drilling into you. Russia, Gog and Magog, and, you know, I believe that territory over there is the land of Magog, right? I believe that. 
It is the land of Gog. So we not we need to understand that there's a lot of things at play. And you know, as I mentioned in, in the past, unless you know who the true Hebrew Israelites are or the Bible, none of this makes any sense. The other thing is you can't be close to the truth, right? So there's a lot of camps out there that they, <clears throat> they teach whatever they want to teach. You know, it's like they will fuss at you because you're not biblical. I mean, because they're not biblical, right? We're biblical. We can give you line upon line, precept upon precept here a little, there a little, but they cannot back up their text. You know, they're, they're, they're inferior in terms of exeget exegetical analysis, right? So we need to understand that our people are filled with all kinds of teachings, all kinds of doctrines that they don't go and vet for themselves. And many of them are deceived. This is a fact. They're not getting around it. Okay. Now, whether or not you agree that Tail Ministries teachings are correct or not, that's on you. And as we've mentioned in the past, it's up to you to be like the Bereans because all we care about is serving the Most High. Yeah. All we care about is living for our Father in heaven, living for our Messiah, Yehoshua, Jesus, the Christ. That is our goal. And as you know, Tail is not trying to please you. You know, we got a lot of people that don't like us, but we have to teach the truth because, see, Tail will not compromise on the scriptures. We don't go along with peer pressure and groupthink. Okay, we submit ourselves to the following of the Most High Yah and the leading of His Holy Spirit. But once again, we ask for you to do your own study, to research for yourselves, Start from scratch, throw away everything anybody has ever taught you, and learn for yourself. Because guess what? Some of Israel may not make it in because they don't know how to get in. There is only one door. Only one door to get into the kingdom of Father Yah, and that's through his son. And some of y'all don't even believe that Yeshua is his son. That is just straight up ridiculous. And then others think they can go in another way. Okay, but the Most High, Yah said, of his Son, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. But you all don't want to hear that. But I had to say that because we're in some dangerous time, family, and it's not a time to play. It's not a time to be a part of some group think, some camp, false doctrine, cults, whatever you want to call it. This is not the time. And as I mentioned, you may want to back up this teaching. I don't know how long this site going to be up after this because it's going straight for the enemy. So we have shown without a doubt that the Negro is the true Hebrew Israelite of the Bible. We have shown you what we believe the scriptures truly teach about the end times. The biggest event to come is World War III and the deliverance of the captives who were sent around the world as slaves on ships. The question we must look at now is what is the enemy's big in-game move? If the enemy knows who we are, then they know that the captivity was to last no more than 400 years. Do they have a backup plan? Every day on the news, you hear about tr the Trump wall. You hear about the coming third temple. Does any of these things have anything to do with the last days? Modern Christendom believes that the third temple portends the arrival of the Antichrist and the last days world government. Will things work out like the Left Behind series have stated? In essence, everything is a con. The third temple is a con. They are formulating an end time script to fit what they have had the Zionist churches teach you. The Escape Plan On March 18, 2014, 
The Times of Israel wrote an interesting article titled, Leaked Report Israel Acknowledges Jews in Fact Khazars. Secret Plan for Reverse Migration to Ukraine. This article has been discussed for years now. However, if we look at it today and compare it to what we see happening with Russia, Ukraine, Israel, and many other nations, things start to make sense. The lies are complex, and unless you have the Holy Spirit to guide and teach you, you will be deceived. These people are experts at deception. One of the escape plans for the false Jews is a return to Khazaria to unite with their ancient people. This may include other nations as well. I've looked into this article and and for a few years, I looked into it for a few years, and now that we look at the 400 year mark in our deliverance, we probably need to look into this a little more. I was not sure of the validity of the article when it first came out, even though it was in the times of Israel. After more research, it definitely seems legit. Let's look into the article in detail. So please uh, excuse me for some of the grammatical mistakes. Uh, but we need to understand that uh, there's a complex dialectic going on. And unless you are led by the Holy Spirit, you won't get it. Um, so, you know, the reason this thing is titled Kazaria 2.0 is because of this complex plan that they have this what they what they call the reverse migration of the Khazars okay so Khazaria is the land of the Khazars so many of you know that the fake Jews the ones who live in the supposed Jerusalem or Israel if you want to call it that uh, they are descendants of Khazars their own people state that now we're going to read this article and there's a few articles we're going to go through which is which is why this teaching is going to be pretty long because i'm going to read through some of these articles and you can follow along with me and uh, see exactly what's happening leak report israel acknowledges jews in fact khazars secret plan for reverse migration to ukraine Khazaria. 2.0. This is the boundaries of Khazaria. So I'm going to go into that article. You can follow along with me. Uh, this was, a, as I mentioned, in 2014. And I think it's uh, ripe for the time we're living in for the things that we see occurring today. So let's follow along. So this is from the Times of Israel. It was written by Jim Wald. He's a Jew. The title, as I mentioned, is Leaked Report, Israel Acknowledges Jews in Fact, Khazars, Secret Plan for Reverse Migration to Ukraine. As I mentioned, this was in 2014, March 16, 2014. And I'm going to just go ahead and read through it. Our Russian and Ukrainian correspondents, Hirsch Ostapolar and I.Z. Grosser spies, also contributed to this story delayed due to the crisis over the Crimean referendum. Fast-breaking developments. Followers of Middle Eastern affairs know two things, always expect the unexpected and never write off Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who has more political lives than the proverbial cat. Only yesterday came news that Syrian rebels plan to give Israel the Golan Heights in exchange for creation of a no-fly zone against the Assad regime. In an even bolder move, it is now revealed Israel will withdraw its settlers from community communities beyond the settlement blocks and relocate, relocate them at least temporarily to Ukraine. Ukraine made this arrangement on the basis of historic ties and in exchange for desperately needed military assistance against Russia. This surprising turn of events had an even more surprising origin, genetics, a field in which Israeli scholars have long excelled. So if you notice here, it says Syrian rebels plan to give Israel the Golan Heights in exchange for creation of a no-fly zone against the Assad regime. 
right? All of this, uh, you know, with the whole attack against Syria. <coughs> so many people stated that the war against Syria, against the Assad regime, was because of oil. To me, when it comes to monetary reasons, that's a secondary reason. There's always a primary reason. I believe the primary reason, okay, that they were going against Assad is because they need more land, right? It's easier to push north into Syria than it is to push the Palestinians out, right? To, to go, go into the Palestinian territory and then uproot all of those people because it's a huge humanitarian crisis to try to take over East Jerusalem and, and take over you know the Palestinian territories is it, it, it's just already too much heat so I think that's probably part of the main reason oil is secondary and also notice it says in an even bolder move it is now revealed Israel will withdraw its settlers from communities beyond the settlement blocks and relocate them at least temporarily to Ukraine so here you know this is a Jewish scholar and Jewish news person uh, stating that Israel has a plan to relo relocate some of their settlers to Ukraine which brings to mind why we're at war now in Ukraine why Ukraine is fighting against Russia why Russia took the Crimean Peninsula or, or, or island whatever that is right whatever you call it so there's a lot of things going on family that you know we need to look at with let's say investigative eyes a warlike Turkic people and a mystery it is well known that sometime in the 8th to 9th centuries the Khazars a warlike Turkic people converted to Judaism and ruled over a vast domain in what became southern Russia and Ukraine what happened to them after the Russians destroyed that empire around the 11th century has been a mystery. Many have speculated that the Khazars became the ancestors of Ashkenazi Jews. So this picture or this map right here is the Khazar Empire, right? The empire, the Khazar Empire, and this map of the Empire of Charlemagne and that of the Arabs, 1857. So Arabs have long cited the Khazar hypothesis in an attempt to deny a Jewish historical claim to the land of Israel. During the UN debate over Palestine partition, Kaim Wiseman responded sarcastically, It is very strange. All my life I have been a Jew, felt like a Jew, and now learn that I am a Khazar. In a more folksy vein, Prime Minister Golden Meir famously said, Khazar Shmazar, there is no Khazar people. I knew no Khazars in Kiev or Milwaukee. Show me these Khazars of whom you speak. See, they, they know they're Khazars. If, if you look at their language, you, you know, the whole Yiddish brew thing, you, you can understand that it's mixed with, with you know, Slavic and uh, really uh, that whole Mongolian mixture of languages right so the whole uh, like for instance I, I watched the guy at uh, uh, one of the uh, news sites and he's a Ashkenazi Jew but he's a believer in the Messiah and um, he understands Turkish so you know they will be they will watch you know the news and he, he would translate the Turkish language now, why is that? He don't tell the people that he understands Turkish because he grew up with Yiddish, right? And that whole Hebrew that they speak is Yiddish, bro. It's a mixture of, of Yiddish, I mean, well, a mixture of the Turkic language and other things. So that's a whole different story in and of itself. I'm going to continue. Contrarian Hungarian ex-communist and scientist Arthur Kessler brought the Khazar hypothesis to a wider audience with the 13th tribe, 1976, in the hope that disproving a common Jewish racial identity would end anti-Semitism. Clearly that hope has not been fulfilled. Most recently, left-wing Israeli historian Shlomo Sand 
The invention of the Jewish people took Kessler's thesis in a direction he had not intended, arguing that because Jews were a religious community descended from converts, they do not constitute a nation or need a state of their own. Scientists, however, dismissed the Kaiser hypothesis because the genetic evidence did not add up. Until now, in 2012, Israeli researcher Aaron Elhaik published a study claiming to prove that Khazar ancestry is the single largest element in the Ashkenazi gene pool. Sand declared himself vindicated, and progressive organs such as Haaretz and the Forward trumpeted the results. So let me say this, family. The one thing he's not telling you here is that Arthur Kessler is an Ashkenazi Jew. Okay? Slomo Sand is an Ashkenazi Jew. And Aaron Elhike is an Ashkenazi Jew. And these are their own people telling you that they are not the people of the book. Now, many Zionist Christians will ignore this, right? Uh, but, you know, if they just did a little research themselves, they will see it's true. You know, not to say anything bad, you know, just because they descended of Khazars. The, the, the whole thing is, is that, you know, we are the people of the book and they're not. That's the point. Right, let's get the truth out. And this is why the world hates us. This is why they hate us. This is why our heritage was stolen. Okay? So what we need to understand is there's a people, whether they understand it or not, is at war with God. And at war with God's people. I'm gonna continue. Israel seems finally to have thrown in the towel. A blue ribbon team of scholars from leading research institutions and museums have just issued a secret report to the government acknowledging that European Jews are in fact Khazars. Whether this will result in yet another proposal to revise the words to Hatikva remains to be seen. At first sight, this would seem to be the worst possible news given the Prime Minister's relentless insistence on the need for Palestinian recognition of Israel as a Jewish state and the stagnation of the peace talks but others have underestimated him at their peril an aide quipped when life hands you an etrog you build a sukkah and see you know stuff like that you know that's not Hebrew sukkah etrog mishpah mishpah mitzvah I mean come on but anyway I digress Speaking off the record, he explained, We first thought that admitting we are really Khazars was one way to get around Abba's insistence that no Jew can remain in a Palestinian state. Maybe we were grasping at straws. But when he refused to accept that, it forced us to think about more creative solutions. The Ukrainian invitation for the Jews to return was a godsend. Relocating all the settlers within Israel in a short time would be difficult for reasons of logistics and economics. We certainly don't want another Fashlan, like the expulsion of the settlers in the Gaza Hiknaktkut. We're not talking about all the Ashkenazi Jews going back to Ukraine. Obviously, that's not practical. Speaking on deep background, a well-placed source in intelligence circles said, we're not talking about all of the Ashkenazi Jews going back to Ukraine. Obviously, that's not practical. The press, as usual, exaggerates and sensationalizes this. This is a way we need military censorship. So, to the title of this teaching, Khazaria 2.0. All Jews who wish to return would be welcomed back without condition as citizens. So, sort of like... Um, what happened with the right of return to Israel, now you'd have a right of return to, to the Ukraine. The more so if they take part in a promised infusion of massive Israeli military assistance, <coughs> excuse me, including troops, equipment, and construction of new bases. If the initial transfer works, other West Bank settlers will be encouraged to relocate to Ukraine as well. After Ukraine bolstered by this support, Reestablishes control over all its territories. The current autonomous Republic of Crimea would once again become an autonomous Jewish domain. So, see why the Ukraine is fighting Russia for that territory? Why they're fighting for the, the Crimean 
land. The small scale successor to the medieval empire of Khazaria as the peninsula too was once known would be called in Yiddish Khazerai. So in Yiddish they would call it Khazerai, right? So we must understand that you know the Ukraine made an offer for them to come back and is and only if they give them that it's really support you know that military you know weaponry planes tanks technology things like that so it's my contention that this is the goal of what's happening today and why we're seeing some of the things we're seeing today and I'm going to explain more of why this is important why it appears that this is coming to pass right now and and as I mentioned in the past as well, I believe a lot of these things are scripted. Now, just because it, it's scripted, I don't believe that, you know, it's not going to happen. I mean, and that people won't die. Uh, it, it is planned that many people will die. It's just that there's a new kingdom coming. And here you can call it Khazaria 2.0. The Khazars did not have to live within Austria's borders. As you know, the spokesman continued, the Prime Minister has said time and again, we are a proud and ancient people whose history here goes back 4,000 years. The same is true of the Khazars, just back in Europe and not quite as long. But look at the map, the Khazars did not have to live within Auschwitz's borders. As the Prime Minister has said, no one will tell Jews where they may or may not live on the historic territory of their existence as a sovereign people. He is willing to make painful sacrifices for peace, even if that means giving up part of our biblical homeland in Judea and Samaria. So they're saying they're Khazarians, but now they're saying it's their biblical homeland of Judea and Samaria, right? So now they want to be, you know, Khazarians and, and converts, but then now... Their biblical homeland is Judea and Samaria. Okay, what is it? That's how they always do double talk. But then you have to expect us to exercise our historical rights somewhere else. We decided this will be on the shores of the Black Sea, where we were an autochthonous people for more than 2,000 years. Even the great non Zionist historian Simon Dubnow said we had the right to colonize Crimea. It is. It's in all the history books. You can look it up. So it is in the history books. It's their land. Ukraine is their land. Khazaria is their land. Okay, now you got to understand the history of when, you know, uh, Khaz you know the Khazarians were there, right? And, you know, King Bulon and all of them were controlling things and they converted to Judaism and that, that whole story. I mean, you could go read it yourself. And then, you know, over time, they got pushed out by the Russians, you know, Slavic people. And uh, then, you know, of course, you had some mixing and things like that. So, so the old land here uh, by the Black Sea showing Khazar's presence in Crimea and coastal regions. So could it be, family, that the reason that the Ukrainian war is happening right now and, you know, we have this fight between the Russians and the Ukrainians or at least the proxies of uh, Russia, um, is to get back Crimea because it's Jewish land. I mean, it all lines up, but let's continue. I'm, I'm going to continue down the road and make my case. I mean, I told you this is going to be long. We like to think of it as sort of a homeland away from home, added the anonymous intelligence source, or the original one, he said with a wink. After all, Herschel wrote about the old new land, didn't he? And the, trans and the transition shouldn't be too difficult for uh, the settlers because, you know, they'll still get to feel as if they are pioneers, experience danger, construct new housing, carry weapons. The women can continue to wear scarves on their heads and food won't be very different from what they already eat because they're the same people. In retrospect, we should have seen this coming, said a venerable State Department Arabist, ticking off the signs on his fingers a little notice report that Russia 
was cracking down on Israeli smuggling of Khazar artifacts. The decision of both Spain and Portugal to give citizenship to descendants of their expelled Jews, as well as evidence that former IDF soldiers were already leading militias in support of the Ukrainian government, and now also maybe the possibility that the missing Malaysian jet was diverted to Central Asia. A veteran Middle East journalist said it's problematic, problematic, but in a perverse way, brilliant. In one fell swoop, BB has managed to confound friend and foe alike. He's put the ball back in the Palestinians' court and relieved the pressure from the Americans without actually making any real concessions. Meanwhile, by lining up with the Syrian rebels in Ukraine, as well as Georgia and Azerbaijan, he compensates for the loss of the Turkish alliance and puts pressure on both Assad and Iran. And the new Cyprus-Israeli gas deal props up Ukraine and weakens the economic leverage of both the Russians and the Gulf oil states. Just brilliant. Reactions from around the world. Given the, conflu given the confluence of the weekend and the Purim and St. Patrick's Day holidays, reporters scrambled to get responses. Reactions from around the world trickled in. Members of the Yesha Council of Settlers, some of them evidently the worst for wear after too much festival slivets, were caught completely off guard. Always wary of Netanyahu, whom they regard as a slick opportunist rather than reliable ideological ally, they refused to comment until they had further assessed the situation. Most of the hastily offered reactions fell into the predictable categories. Right-wing anti-Semitic groups pounced on the story as vindication of their conspiracy theories, claiming that this was the culmination of the Jews' centuries-old plan to avenge the defeat of Khazaria by the Russians in the Middle Ages a reprise of Israel's support for Georgia in 08, Jews have memories as long as their noses, one declared. From Ramallah, a Fatah spokesman said the offer was a start, but did not go nearly far enough towards satisfying the Palestinian demands holding up an image of a Khazar warrior from an archaeological artifact, he explained. There's a continuum of conquest and cruelty. It's very simple genetics, does not lie. We see the results today the Zionist regime and brutal occupational forces are descended from warlike barbarians. Palestinians are descended from peaceful pastoralists. In fact, from the ancient Israelites that you have falsely claimed as your ancestors, by the way, it is not true, however, that your ancestors ever had a temple in Jerusalem. So, some of the Palestinians, you know, are Hebrew Israelites, and that's the Negro Palestinians, which they don't show too much of. So we need to understand that um, so some of those people can make claims to being Israel. Then you got the others who are of Arabic descent and not Israel. So, you know, we're not going to get into the whole craziness stuff of the camps, you know, with the whole native Indians and Mexicans being Israel. I mean, let's just move on because that's just a coin tail pro the famously reliable unofficial intelligence website Decafile admitted, Boy, are our faces red. We were caught flat-footed and thought that the return to Spain and Portugal was the real story. Obviously, that was an impeccably planned and clever thing to distract attention from the coming revolution in Ukraine. Nicely played Mossad. Prolific blogger Richard Silverstein, whose knowledge of Jewish culture and uncanny ability to ferret out military secrets regularly provoked astonishment. Even among his critics continue. Frankly, I'm surprised that my Mossad sources did not get this story to me first, but I've been up against a deadline for an essay on the Kabbalistic significance of sesame seeds, the main ingredient in hummus, so I haven't caught up on my emails. But do I feel vindicated? Well, yes, but it's a scant satisfaction. I've been saying for years that the Jews are descended from Mongol, Tartar, Khazars, which is true, but it has, has barely made a dent propaganda armor of the Zionist Hasbaroid dotes. So, keep that in mind, family. Mongol Tartar Khazars. Keep that in mind. That's who they're descendants of. An official of a leading human rights NGO said, Evacuating illegal settlements must be a part of any peace deal. But first, forcing settlers to leave Palestine and then resettling them in Ukraine may be a violation of the Fort Geneva Convention. 
We'll see what the ICC has to say about this. And if they think they can even more trigger happy in the Ukraine than the West Bank, they have another thing coming. See, everybody know they're violent. They know they're violent. Ultra, ultra, ultra orthodox spokesman Manukim Yantev, formerly of Ironwork Claw, welcomed the news. We reject the Zionist state, which is illegitimate until Messiah comes. We don't care where we live as long as we study the Torah and obey its commandments in full. However, we refuse to serve in the military there as well as here. And we also want subsidies. This is God's will. And they don't even follow the law. They don't follow the Torah. I mean, they follow the Talmud, but I digress. The spokeswoman for a delegation of Episcopalian peace activists reached after the Christ at the Checkpoint Conference in Bethlehem said with tears in her eyes. We applaud this consistency of principle. If only all Jews would think like Menachem Yantif. In fact, I'd like to call them Manukim Yantif Jews. M.Y. Jews, for short. Then anti-Semitism would disappear and members of all three Abrahamic faiths would again live together peacefully here as they did before the advent of Zionism. The nation state is a relic of the 19th century which has caused untold suffering, the most urgent task for world peace is the immediate creation of a free and sovereign Palestine. Noted academic and theorist Judith Buntner mused, It may seem like a paradox to establish alterity or interruption at the heart of ethical relations, but to know that we have first to consider what such terms mean. One might argue that the distinctive trait of Khazarian identity is that it is interrupted by alterity, that the relation to the Gentile defines not only its diasporic situation, but one of its most fundamental ethical relations. Although such a statement may well be true, meaning that it belongs to a set of statements that are true, it manages to reserve alterity as a predicate of a prior subject. The relation to alterity becomes on predicate of being Khazarian. It is quite another thing to understand that very relationship as challenging the idea of Khazarian as a static sort of being, one that is adequately described as a subject. Coexistent projects can only begin with the dismantling of political Zionism. Not the two-state solution they expected. Anti-Israel BDS boycott divestment sanctions, which, you know, in the United States they're trying to get a law passed so you can't boycott. Leader Ali Abu Ben Amiyah put it more simply, pounding his desk he fumed. So Israel and Khazaria, this is what the Zionists mean by two-state solution. Do the math. Has no one read my book? Students for the Justice of Palestine called an emergency meeting to establish ties with the Pekineg Liberation Organization, saying Pekinegs should not pay the price for European anti-Semitism. The New Solidarity Group, Students for Pekinex in Ukraine, proclaimed as its motto, from the Black to the Caspian Sea, we're going to find somebody to free. For this part, peace activist and former East Jerusalem Administrator Myron Benavuti, uh, let's see, Benvenuti, yep, responded with equanimity. I've got nothing to worry about. I'm Sephardic and my family has lived here for centuries anyway. If I have to go somewhere else, it's going to be Spain, not Ukraine. More sunshine, less gunfire. The consensus of the broad majority of middle Israel, which feels that Netanyahu is not doing enough for peace, but also questions the sincerity of the Palestinians, is skeptical and despairing, one woman said in frustration. We all long for an agreement, but just cannot see how to achieve it. For now, all we can see is Chazarai, which is what? Kazaria. So, family, what's going to happen is this. So, you're going to have a lot of people that's going to call this teaching anti-Semitic. Now, I'm reading from a Jewish website. Okay, I didn't put this together myself. Okay, and there's a bunch of people who admit that the people who are living in Israel right now are Khazars. And so, the point of this teaching right now is to show you that... Many of them know that they are Khazars. The scholars admit that they are Khazars and as, that they are Khazars, that they are not the people of the book. Okay, and that there's a plan, a 
a plan to bring many of the settlers back to Ukraine. I'm of the opinion that there's a plan to bring them all back. Because, as I've said in the past, these people, first of all, they, they know who they sent into captivity. Our descendants, I mean our ancestors, who are the true Hebrew Israelites. We are the true Hebrew Israelites, the Negro. And so they know the prophecies that the Most High Yah was going to send us into captivity for 400 years. And at the end of 400 years, we're going back home. They know this. So they know they're going to get kicked out of the land. Now, I'm sure they try to come up with plans to fight against the Most High, but I'm sure they've seen they can't change things because the Most High controls the hearts and minds of men. So they will do whatever the Most High says. They cannot overcome God. Okay, so we're going to continue down. And as I mentioned, this is a long teaching. So as I just read to you, family, there's a plan for Kazaria 2.0. Okay, so now the thing is this. Is it just going to be the Ukrainian territory or, territory, or is this territory going to be larger? Okay, because right now we can see where the Khazarian Empire was on this map. That is the ancient territory of the Khazarian Empire. Now, is this the plan to just reformulate this territory? Or is there a bigger plan? Khazaria. So let's let's continue. I'm, I'm going to read a little more from another article, which is based upon the article I just read. So family, Khazaria 2.0, the planned Jewish migration out of Israel. So this is a story um, by Pam Barker, right? And uh, what we need to understand is that there's a, what would you call it, a bigger plan at work. Okay, and, and so the reason I'm going to read this article is because I think they're hitting on what that bigger plan is. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but just the relevant parts. Genetic research showing that Eastern European Jews do indeed originate from the historical region of Khazaria in Central Asia and not Palestine has been officially accepted, which Jim Wall discusses below. And I'm not going to read that again since I read it. Curiously, a mere month before this news was released in 2014, the Western Bad Coop in Ukraine erupted. Just a coincidence? As our first author J.C. Collins observes, the war in Ukraine was intended to clear the Russians out of the Donbas and Crimea. Yep, and that's exactly what, what happened. And uh, now they're fighting for the Donbas area and Crimea. And Kazakhstan, a large country some distance to the east of Ukraine, has been developing relations with Israel since the collapse of the Soviet Union around 1990. Relations on a number of key fronts. Astana, its capital, located in the far northeast of the country, has undergone a construction boom, with key monuments having a strongly Masonic character. As Collins observes, strange times on the new world frontier. The planned Jewish migration out of Israel, J.C. Collins. On March 16, 2014, the Times of Israel published a little discussed piece titled, Leaked Report, Israel Acknowledges Jews and Fat Khazar, Secret Plan for Reverse Migration to Ukraine. Just four weeks before this explosive publication on February 2014, the official and democratic government of Ukraine was ousted and a Jewish-supported new interim government was appointed. Both of these occurrences can be connected to the larger construction of a new world capital in Kazakhstan called Astana. So, this is the point I'm making. I believe that Kazakhstan is going to be the capital of the Antichrist kingdom. I believe this is the plan. Okay, now, Khazars, Kazakhstan, they are related. Now, the Kazakhs are a mixture of Slavic and Mongol, Mongolian people, okay, but they all are related, okay? The Khazarians have a little bit mixture of uh, Mongols, but they're mainly Slavic, but they're families, okay? 
The Times of Israel piece is important because for the first time there is a semi-official pronouncement of the Khazarian heritage of Eastern European Jews who migrated to the land of Palestine and established the nation of Israel. This idea was first promoted by the Hungarian historian Arthur Kessler in his 76 book titled The Thirteenth Tribe. Kessler suffered heavy criticism and his book was the target of massive propaganda campaign meant to discredit his work. The fact that an official Jewish publication is now discussing a secret report promoting the same conclusion should not go unnoticed by the large contingent of online scholars and historians. So I'm going to leave it right there, family. Okay, and you can go on and read this article in detail if you, you know, have the time and read about, you know, the relationship between Israel and Kazakhstan. Okay, so all of this stuff is starting to tie together and I'm going to show you some more things of why I believe Kazakhstan is going to be the capital of the Antichrist, the new beast kingdom that's coming. So family, here's a video. Okay, by and this is about a article uh, in a book, really, written by a Jewish scholar. And basically, uh, what this video states is that he believes that Israel will not exist as a nation, okay, within 30 to 50 years. Personally, I believe it is sooner. Okay, so let's listen to this, and um, there's no sound, okay, so you can read the text. So, family, as you saw, even though there wasn't any sound, um, the goal, first of all, is for a lot of the Jews and, you know, the Ashkenaz to go back to Ukraine. What you also saw is that their own scholars state that they are Khazarian. Now, you also see that this particular scholar does not believe Israel will exist as a nation within 30 to 50 years. I'm of the opinion that it's sooner than that because what I'm seeing is the fulfillment of prophecy. Um, I'm seeing everything line up as I thought it would. Does that mean it's going to happen the way I think? No, because as I mentioned in other teachings, we see through a glass darkly. But it's very, very interesting, very interesting. So let's look at some more information about Europe. And let's look at some more information about Asia. Should be very interesting. So, family, here's another story which ties into the hypothesis that the plan is to move the fake Jews to Ukraine, but not only to Ukraine, but to that landmass of Magog, the land of Gog, which I believe is the territory of Khazaria and Kazakhstan. And that Russia and China are part of that territory. Right now, granted, Khazaria territory was smaller than what the new territory is going to be, in my opinion. 
but <coughs> just as they were planning to build a new world order which is an, an American order right the new world order because America is the new world that was an American order right this is a European order and an Asian order that's coming so on the road to a united Eurasia so this is the goal here family a united Eurasia whenever President Vladimir Putin stresses Russia's all-embracing and strategic partnership with China one can hear the proverbial howls of anger emanating from the neocon neoliberal axis in the beltway as he met Chinese President Xi Jinping in Beijing this past Saturday Putin even allowed himself an understatement to say we have a strategic cooperation is not enough anymore this is why we have started talking about a comprehensive partnership and strategic collaboration comprehensive means that we work virtually on all major avenues strategic means that we attach enormous intergovernment importance to this work why understatement because this really ventures way beyond a stream of business deals deals of course matter if Beijing China and Russia advance 58 project worth 50 billion these include a 6.2 billion loan from Beijing to build the 770 kilometer long high speed railway between Moscow and Kazan and 12 billion in loans to build an LNG plant in the Russian Arctic. Russian Railways, Russian investment company Sanara Group, China Railway and Chinese CRRC will also invest in a plant in Russia to build a hundred high-speed trains designed for the Moscow Kazan high-speed railway the railway inevitably will be connected to the future 100 billion dollar high-speed expansion of the Trans-Siberian tra Trans-Siberian between Moscow and Beijing it goes without saying this is all part of an essential node of the new Silk Road and as if this was not enough in a few in a, in a further graphic instance of geoeconomic interpolation russia and china's central banks are setting up a yen clearing mechanism in russia the interconnectivity bonanza putin and z met for the 15th time just after z concluded a three nation eurasia tour serbia poland and Uzbekistan where alongside foreign minister Yang Yi he explicitly laid down the bridge between the new Silk Roads or One Belt One Road as they are officially referred to in China and the development of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization so I'm gonna stop right there family so family we have to ask ourselves what is the Silk Road Here's a Wikipedia article. The Silk Road was an ancient network of trade routes that connected the East and West. It was central to cultural interaction between the regions for many centuries. The Silk Road primarily refers to the ter terrestrial routes connecting East Asia and Southeast Asia with East Africa, West Asia, and Southern Europe. The Silk Road derives its name from the lucrative trade in silk carried out along its length, beginning in the Han Dynasty. The Han, the Han Dynasty expanded the Central Asian section of the trade routes around 114 BCE through the missions and exploration of the Chinese Imperial Envoy, Zhang Quan. So I'm going to stop there. So basically, family, the Silk Road connected Europe, Western Europe and Eastern Europe and Asia. Now we have a new Silk Road. What is that new Silk Road going to do? Connect East and West. East and Western Europe, Asia, parts of Africa. Same thing. China's $900 billion new Silk Road. What you need to know. You probably heard of the Silk Road, the ancient trade route that once ran between China and the West during the days of the Roman Empire. It's how oriental silk first made it to europe it's also the reason china is no stranger to carrots and now it's being resurrected announced in 2013 by president xi jinping a brand new double trade corridor is set 
to reopen channels between China and its neighbors in the West, most notably Central Asia, the Middle East, and Europe. According to the Belt and Road Action Plan, released in 2015, the initiative will encompass land routes, the belt, and maritime routes, the road, with the goal of improving trade relationships in the region, primarily through infrastructure investment. So family, what you see happening is a change in power. The power is going to move away from North America, and it's going to move to West and Eastern Europe, or Eurasia, right, which includes Europe and Asia. So as we read, it's going to be Western Europe and Eastern Europe, along with Eurasia. Okay, now think about that for a second, okay? Think about the prophecies that is probably going to be fulfilled. And I'm about to get into some scripture. That's why I told you, family, this is long. It's not going to be short. I got one more article. We're going to cover a real short piece of it. And then we're going to get into some scriptures. I told you it's long. So this is from Combined Transport Magazine, The New Silk Road, The Vision of an Interconnected Eurasia. I'm going to go down here, family, um, and we're going to discuss a little bit about this New Silk Road. Okay. So. When shedding light on the New Silk Road development and an development, analysts often mention China first. Since becoming China's president in 2013, Xi Jinping has kicked off a series of both domestic and foreign policy initiatives. Arguably, one of the most significant projects in this context is the New Silk Road, today more often referred to as the One Belt, One Road Initiative. At the same Kazakhstan has played a fascinating role in the development of Obor. Obor is one belt, one road. At the ninth largest country in the world, Kazakhstan is landlocked in between China, Russia, and the Caspian Sea, which is why it has an important geostrategic location. Historically, it has long served as a way station along the 2,000-year-old Silk Road, connecting Asia and Europe generating roughly 60% of its GDP through the oil industry. The Kazakh president, Nazarbayev, said, saw that investments and diversification into other industries were a necessary decision to take when the world financial crisis hit the country and oil prices as well as exports declined. Carl Gessen, CEO of Cargo's Gateway, remembers after 2007 and 8, Nazarbayev started promoting the idea of reactivating the old trade path of the Silk Road, a substantial $200 million U.S. dollar investment into an inland port, followed which became operational in 2015 to interconnect the Chinese and Russian railway system. Close, close partnerships with China were formed and in December 2016, the 1,000th block train from China was arriving in Europe. So as you can see, family, even Kazakhstan, as we mentioned, is part of this Silk Road initiative. And the railway is going to go through there between Russia and Asia. It's centrally strategic location. So remember, as we read, the old Silk Road, was to combine Asia with the Roman Empire. And the Roman Empire was West and Eastern Europe. Same thing is going to happen. And I'm going to show you what I believe is going to happen, okay? And uh, for those of you who have followed our end time prophecy teachings, it'll make sense to you. So, Kazakhstan. The other thing we should look at is Kazakhstan. As I mentioned, Kazakhstan, they are, mo they are a Mongol Turkish people. Though the Ukrainians are mostly Slavic, the mixture of peoples occurred over the years. Kazaria 2.0 will include Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and maybe other Eurasian states. 
So those other Eurasian states and its union between Ukraine and Kazakhstan, this Eurasian unity is all what the Silk Road is about. They're uniting Europe and they're uniting Asia. They are rebuilding the Roman Empire, West and East Roman Empire. <coughs> so basically the power shifted to this unknown continent, America. And America created what they call the New World Order. Okay, America is the New World, which means it is their order, their world order, which is why they call it the New World Order, which is the woman who rides the beast, who has military bases all over the world, who controls the world with her finances and her merchandise. Okay, that is going away. And this is all planned. Now, I'm of the opinion that, you know, and I'm not saying I'm right, that some of the people who are part of the New World Order, part of America, may not be too happy with that idea. But the plan is going to move forward. I told you all, this is scripted, right? But it all fits Bible prophecy. So now we're going to start getting to some scripture since we laid that foundation. So the four horns. Okay, the reason why I titled this image the four horns because we're dealing with Daniel's statue and those first few kingdoms that enslaved God's people and scattered God's people, right? Okay, that, that, that picture of that Daniel had in Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7, right? They had a go with Babylon. The breast of silver was Persia. The thighs of brass was Greece. The legs of iron, Rome. Now what we're going to see, family, okay, the head of gold is still Babylon. Because remember, ancient Babylon was just the head. Now you got this end time world government system, which is made up of all of these nations. But the head is Babylon, which is America. Now they have a problem with Iran, who is Persia. Okay, now this whole new system, Persia is going to be a part of that as well. Okay, now Greece is going to be a part of it and Rome. Why? Because it is part of what they call the revived Roman Empire. And I agree with that. The leg of iron is the Roman Empire. Now, there's something that's going to happen that the scriptures tell us. Okay, to this, this world government system. Now, it's not going to be this all-encompassing system like they want, where they taught us that the whole world was going to be under the control of the Antichrist, and the Antichrist would dominate us all. That's not what's going to happen. Why? Because Israel must leave the lands of their captivity first. All of the people who are descendants of Negro slaves must be freed from the land of their captivity to go back first into the wilderness and then to the land of Jerusalem. I don't want to call it the land of Israel, right? Uh, who knows what the Lord's going to call it, but let's say for, for all purposes to the land of Jerusalem. Okay, or the city of Jerusalem. Okay, because I don't want to use Israel since they use that. You know, we, we'll stick with that for a better, better identifier. So, so we have these four kingdoms, Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. They scattered Israel. And so the reason why I called this the four horns, because you will see why. I'm going to tie this to Zechariah chapter 1. Zechariah chapter 1, verses 18 through 19. They scattered Judah and Jerusalem. Then lifted I up mine eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. So, who are these horns? They are the ones that scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Who did that? Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome. They scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Jeremiah 50, 
verse 33. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. So when they took our people, they refused to let us go. They held us fast. Specifically, Babylon, who's the head. And Babylon is still the head of this world government system. But something's going to happen to Babylon later on. And we've discussed that. The fall of America. The fall of Babylon. The four carpenters, Zechariah chapter 1, verses 20 through 21. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then said I, what come these to do? And he spake, saying, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. So, the four carpenters will kick the fake Jews out of the, our land. Because it says, but these are come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their, hand, their horn over the land. They lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. So we know the scriptures teach. Right? That Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. The four carpenters are coming to kick them out of the land. Which is probably why the backup plan is to go to Khazaria, to go to Ukraine, to go to Crimea. The four carpenters are destroyers. Carpenter is the Hebrew word sharash, meaning craftsman, artisan, engraver, graver, artificer, graver, artificer, but more specifically, which is skillful to destroy. Skillful to destroy. So the four carpenters are skillful destroyers. Now, I put Ezekiel 21 31 to see, show you how it's being used. It's the same word, Charash. And I will pour out mine indignation upon thee. I will blow against thee in the fire of my wrath and deliver thee into the hand of brutish men and skillful to destroy. That's how it's used in Ezekiel 21 31. So the, and, and as we see, in, in, in Zechariah chapter 1, that the four carpenters come to do what? To fray them and to cast them out of the land, which means they're coming to destroy them. Now, the ten give their power to the beast. Revelation 17, verses 16 through 17. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, which is America, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God had put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Now, I'm not going to get into the, the whole thing about whether or not America is Babylon or not, and, you know, Saudi Arabia and Arabs and all this stuff. We believe that it is the United States of America that is the whore that rides the beast. All of the descript descriptive attributes fits no other nation but the United States of America. Okay, so here what we see is that the ten will hate the whore. Now, there's something interesting about the ten, okay, that we're going to get into as we go. But they agreed to give their kingdom unto the beast. Now, a lot of times, you know, we think in terms of them giving their power to the Antichrist. And at some point that will happen. But as I mentioned in a previous show, a lot of time can happen between verses, right? Like the 10 come into power, right? And then later on, they give their power to the beast. Now, what I believe this is saying is that the 10 will give their power to the world governmental beast. Because the woman's going to be gone, but the beast system will remain. Okay, the beast system will remain, but the woman that rises, it, she will be destroyed. She will no longer be in existence. And so let's say for all purposes, they're going to give their power to the United Nations. 
okay but as I mentioned in my coming to kingdoms video there's gonna be two kingdoms on earth the kingdom of Antichrist which is the Gentile kingdom the Roman Empire and it's go there's gonna be the kingdom of Father Yah which is the returned people from captivity the true Hebrew Israelites they will go back to their land so there's gonna be two kingdoms in the last of the last days so a new kingdom is gonna form its defeat partly of iron and partly of clay it's that East and West Roman Empire five on the East five on the West the Western side of the Roman Empire and the Eastern side of the Roman Empire that the Silk Road will once again connect but they're not gonna be one right they, they, they're, gonna, they're gonna have divisions as you can see between different cultures and you know between the Eurasians you know that European people and the Asian people and all of these things there's going to be conflict so there's, they're not going to be this this all encompassing global entity that the Left Behind series taught us so East and Western Roman Empire the Emperor Diocletian divided the Empire into halves with the Eastern Empire governed out of Byzantium later Constantinople and the Western Empire governed from Rome both sections were known equally as the Roman Empire although in time the Eastern Empire would adopt Greek instead of Latin and would lose much of the character of the traditional Roman Empire so what was the Silk Road for family to unite East and West Roman Empire with what Asia what to buy their silk now what's happening is the same thing again right it's just on a bigger scale China's rebuilding the Silk Road to do trade and unite Eastern and Western Europe the Bible says there's nothing new under the Sun what was is what shall be a broken kingdom Daniel chapter 2 and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise and whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part of potter's clay and part of iron the kingdom shall be divided but there shall be in it the strength of iron for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay so this kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken so it's going to be an oppressive government but it's not going to be all encompassing it's not going to be all powerful and it, and they won't be able to just go and do like america did and just snap and bruise as as much right because they're going to be partly broken they're not going to be as united like let's say as america and its western european allies in the way America has control over these nations today so they're gonna be a little weaker than America Daniel chapter 7 the fourth beast after this I saw in the night visions and behold a fourth beast dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly and it had what great iron teeth and what did it do it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it and it was different from the from all the beasts that were before it and it had ten horns so this beast had ten horns the image has ten toes that final kingdom is going to be the ten toes why because the ten horns which is the ten toes they're going to hate the woman and destroy her and they're going to take over verse 8 I considered the horns and behold there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots and behold this horn's eyes were like the eyes of a man and their mouth speaking great things so in the future this is how I see it family not saying I'm, I'm right in the future after the ten take power three of them are going to be uprooted by another little horn that comes up and that is going to be the Antichrist how much time between that I don't know because remember the Bible says also that those who persecuted Israel they're going to go into slavery now and it says those curses of Deuteronomy 28 is going to go on them so I'm guessing here that the 400 years might apply to them 
So they may be in captivity for 400 years. Just my interpretation, not saying I'm accurate, but that's how I see it right now. So the land of Magog. So this is the land, right? Gog of Magog. So the New World Order would be run out of ancient Khazarian Empire and and, the, and their relatives territory so so let me rephrase that family because it's not going to be a new world order because as I mentioned the new world order is an American world order this is going to be the ten toes order however you want to pronounce it and the kingdom is going to be that territory of European Eastern Eastern and Western European territories right mainly out of the Eastern European side the land of Magog okay where Khazaria is where Kazakhstan is this is where Esau is gonna rule in the last days. so it will be a shared rule between Western and Eastern Europe it is Gog of the land of Magog okay so this is the land of Magog which is going to include both Western and Eastern Europe and their relations or you know uh, economic bonds if you want to call it that with Asia which is why the Silk Road is being built by China, which is why China China was built as a mega economic powerhouse. I mean, you know, you, you can't be foolish to think that America was stupid enough, right, to say, we're going to send all our manufacturing to Asia, to China, and we're going to send them all our money and let them build all our things and not think that China would be a threat in the future. This was the goal. Power is going to shift to Eastern Europe. And power is going to be shared between Western and Eastern Europe and Asia. This is why you have two feet. Five feet on the right, five feet on the left. Eastern and Western Europe. This is why you have the Silk Road. To once again tie together both East and Western Roman Empire. This is how I see it, family. Not saying I'm right, but I mean, it all makes sense to me. So you have all this stuff going on with Venezuela as well. America tries to, you know, exert her, her strength and her muscle while she's on her last leg, right, to try to dominate in these last, let's say, chess moves. Because probably what's happening is that uh, they're still, let's say, secret societies within secret societies and and they're you know uh, let's say within the government let's say and they're contending with each other for whose plan is going to be whose whose plan is going to work out now the ones at the very top their goal is to have a new location of power and military might and their plan is to dominate the world i don't think in the initial stage that they were planning on destroying america but the most high said he puts in their hearts to fulfill his will to destroy them now think about this okay if the powers that be wanted or want china to and russia and the whole slavic nations over there uh to be in power you know you can't allow america to stay because america still is very influential still has a decent military they're a threat now if for some reason you know Germany doesn't like us anymore and France doesn't like us anymore and that seems to be the case because of Trump then they will align themselves with Eastern Europe right and you have that relationship between Germany and Russia with the gas pipelines right those relationships are already forming so if that's the case then America at some points are going to lose allies right and as we see in the scriptures the ten are going to betray they're going to hate the whore. They're part of the world government system. But they're going to hate the whore and they're going to betray her and they're going to burn her with fire. So like Obadiah said, the ones who sit at your table are going to betray you, Esau. So this is a complex thing, but this is what I see. I'm not saying I'm correct, but this is what I see. So remember, in my video the coming two kingdoms there's gonna be the Antichrist kingdom the ten horn kingdom and then you're gonna have the kingdom of God a new Israel or Jerusalem will be formed from 
the Hebrews who returned from the second exodus. So a new Israel from the returned Hebrews through the means of the second exodus will occur. That is Yah's kingdom. Daniel chapter 2 verse 44. And in the days of these kings, what kings? The ten. Shall the God of heaven set up what? A kingdom which shall never be destroyed. So the kingdom that God is going to set up during the reign of the ten is going to be his kingdom, which is his people. The ones from the second exodus who goes back to the land of Israel. But remember, they go to the wilderness first for God to filter out the rebels, and then we go back into the land. So family, as I told you before, it's good to prepare at least a little bit. It appears that these times are here. It does seem like this is the end of our 400 years, as I mentioned. However, Father Yah truly knows the time of our exodus. Prepare like it will happen, even if it does not happen. So, you know, it's sort of like, you know, since you know a famine's coming, you need to prepare ahead of time. You know, put a little food here, put a little water there. You know, I mean, I'm not saying you can afford a lot, but guess what? An extra can of beans is better than no beans, right? So, like I said, family, you know, this is what I see. This is my opinion. And I'm sure you're going to have all the people who don't spend as much time in the Word as I do. And I'm not trying to brag on myself, but it's just I get so many emails of people harassing me. It gets on my nerves, but uh, which is why sometimes I may not come across very good. So I apologize for that sometimes. You know, I feel tired. And But today I'm doing pretty good. So family, this is what I see. And, you know, take note of the things that's happening in Venezuela. America's about to end invade venezuela israel is about to you know attack again in syria syria said if you attack us again we're going to bomb you um russia told israel not to do it uh, you know how the fake jews are they're going to do it um just so many things going on the the issues with ukraine and russia are increasing that's going to be war on several fronts family wars on several fronts it will be a world war. <clears throat> it will be a world a world war, definitely. And there will be martial law. And the borders will be closed. And it will be hard to get food. And people are going to be riding and killing each other. So make sure your heart is right with the Most High Yah. <clears throat> make sure you know the Lord Yahushua as your Savior. Make sure you trust in the Lord Yahushua, Jesus for your salvation and him alone because wide is the path that leads to destruction and many that be there so on it straight and narrow is the path that leads to eternal life and few that be that find it be the ones who find it don't listen to other people i keep telling you that but you know a lot of y'all don't listen and i i can't do anything about it but pray for you and that's what i'll do i pray for y'all salvation family israel your captivity is ending prepare to leave the land of babylon